If you're like me and you were at any level of school around eight years ago, you'll know that there's one game that literally everyone was playing. That game was 2048, and if by some miracle you haven't heard of this game, here's a quick rundown. You're given a 4x4 grid where tiles, each having a number with a power of 2 on them, are located. These tiles can be moved on the grid by shifting all the tiles as far as they go in one of the four directions. When this shift occurs, if any of the two tiles of the same number were to collide at the end, those tiles are merged, with the resulting number being the next power of 2. After every shift of the game board is complete, a new tile with a value of 2 or occasionally 4 is added to the game board in one of the remaining empty tile locations. The game continues these steps until the players combine the tiles to form a tile with a number 2048 on it, or gets to the point where the board is full and the player can make no more moves. This is the game we are making today in Discord. Now, for this video, there isn't anything new I haven't done in a previous game, so for this video, I'll be focusing mainly on the process of how I add new games to the bots, as well as going over my code a bit more in depth than I usually do. At any rate though, I actually started by redoing how my commands work, where instead of using this hacky function on one blank instance of every game, I instead made an object where the keys are the commands to run the game, and the value is a simple lambda function that returns a new instance of the game. Ignore Minesweeper, that one's a bit weird. Once the object was set up, I simply switched the implementing code to check if the incoming message is a command, and if it is, grab and call it lambda function value. With all that squared away, I began working on the actual 2048 game, and because I'm your average lazy programmer, to do this I mainly just copied all the important bits of code like the class definition required methods from another game and then edited the code from there. The constructor is mainly just housekeeping stuff like passing up the game ID and other generic info to the game based parent class, as well as to initialize game state, which in this case is the game board and score. The other necessary functions that need to be implemented are the functions to get both the information for the in-game and post-game message, and then the two functions to handle interaction and reaction events. For the during and post-game messages, I first change the game name and pick a new color for the game to be presented by in the little embed side color thing, which for 2048 I made the softer yellow color. From there I then got working on the basic structure of the game board on the embed itself. For 2048, I initially planned to allow both Unicode and image representations of the game to be used, which would be a drop down selection to change the display, but after playing around with the Unicode version, which you will see here soon, I decided that it was a very hard to see and really not that good, so I ended up ditching it. To make the initial Unicode system, I first made a mapping between the internal values I was going to use to represent each 2048 number. Ignore the fact that making this an object is completely pointless as the keys match up with what they would be in an array index. I ended up switching to that later and also ignore the fact that I could not use the actual 2048 numbers because well, there's no 2048 Unicode characters. Instead, I just used the numbers 1 through 16. Those characters are then implemented into the game board to string function that converts the stored game board into a string that I send with the game message in Discord. With that complete, the last step to getting the message ready to be sent to Discord is to add the four buttons that will be used to shift all the tiles in one of the four directions. I do this by simply adding four message buttons to a message action row, with each button's ID being the direction it shifts the tiles, and the label just being a Unicode character of an arrow pointing in said direction. Now that the message is sorted, it's time to move on to the actual game logic, starting with actually shifting the game board when you click one of the buttons. This is accomplished by first adding a switch statement to determine which button was clicked before passing the logic off to another function that will go through the shifting logic for the given direction. To keep things simple, I start off by just implementing the left shifting logic before then moving onto the right shift and then up and down. I went through many edits and revisions of this code before I've settled on its final form. And to keep things simple, I'm going to only focus on the final code as it stands to explain it how, how it works. While the act of shifting a single tile is abstracted out to be the same regardless of the direction, each of the four directions had different ways of iterating through the tiles. If we use left as our example, you will always want to start with the second column. The first can be skipped because tiles in the first column can't move anywhere. From there, I then process the shifting the tile in the desired direction. I first initialize the variable which tracks that the tile has been moved before getting the value of the tile using its x and y grid position. If that value is 0, I simply return back the tile has not been moved because you can't move an empty tile. 
If it is any other number, I continue and initialize the variable holding the position of the tile it is moving to, and also a variable to store if this tile's new position has been determined. The code then enters a while loop that goes for as long as the tile's position has not been determined. Each iteration of the loop first moves the move to variable in the given direction of the shift, and then gets the tile number at that position. If the position we have moved to is not on the game board, or the number at said position is not zero, with the number also not being equal to the current moving tiles number, or the tile being moved to has already been merged this shift, then I begin the logic of placing the tile at the position just before this one because we have reached a condition that prohibits the tile from being moved to the next position. To do this, I first get the opposite direction of the one we are currently moving in, so that way I can offset the move to position back one space. I then do a check if the position one back is the same as a start, because if it is, there is no need to do anything else because the tile hasn't moved. But if it isn't, we mark that tile has been moved and adjust the game board to reflect the tile's movement. Lastly, we set the variable set to true to mark that this tile's new position has now been set and we can exit our while loop. On the other hand, if the new position causes a merge of two tiles, I likewise set both the moved and set variable to true. Increment the tile's value at the merge location by 1 to represent the next power of 2, while also setting the moving tile's original position to be empty. And then increase the score by the value of the new merged tile's value before finally adding this position to the merged positions array so that this tile cannot be merged again for the rest of the shift. And that is how the shifting logic works. So now after implementing the other three directions, I added some further logic to check if the board was full, which gave me all the necessary information to determine when the game was over and end the game. Now at this point, I have the logic of 2048 complete. The game is endless and does not end when you get 2048, so at this point you can play as long as you like. The only problem now is that this 2048 game looks absolutely awful. I mean, you can't really even tell what the numbers are on the game board. This clearly isn't going to work, so let's spruce up the game a bit by making the game board be generated by my API. I've previously used this same strategy for both chess and tic-tac-toe, so it's not all that hard for me to do this. To get started, I simply create another Discord game's endpoint that once you call it and pass the relevant URL parameters will generate the game board image. The image is generated using basic graphics 2D, which in the end gets drawn onto the buffer and returned. The game board is generated using a pass URL parameter, which is just the game board represented by numbers split with commas. These numbers are simply converted to both the corresponding power of 2 and tile color, which get rendered onto a dark tan background. And honestly, that is it. It's not really all that complex. That being said, it makes a world of difference in terms of how the game looks, and honestly, this is probably my new favorite game I've made thus far. But there we go, 2048 in Discord. If you want this bot for yourself, a link will be down below in the description to add the bot to your own Discord server. If you have any suggestions for any future games you'd like to see me remake in Discord, feel free to leave a comment below. But that is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you guys all next time. Peace out.